Hey, it's Ryan over at Two Minute Tennis, and this video is all about how to improve your slice backhand. I would highly recommend you go out and film yourself hitting slice backhands from the side view and the back view so you can review the footage and look for the things that I cover in this video. So the first thing you must know about, really on all strokes, is the grip. What grip is gonna help you hit good slice backhands? Now, typically what is taught is to use a continental grip. The Continental Grip is good for players who are advanced with it and do a great job on the slice backhand. But players who are struggling with their slice, there is a different grip that you can use that will make a world of difference. Before we go into the grips, let's talk about the hand and the racket itself. On your hand, there are two spots you got to know about, the base knuckle of your index finger and your heel pad. When it comes to the grip itself, it's eight bevels. And when you are looking at the bevels, make sure that your racket is on its edge. So you want your racket straight up and down when looking at the butt of the racket so that the orientation is correct. When you are right-handed, you count the bevels clockwise. As a lefty, you count the bevels counterclockwise. So for instance, the very top bevel, no matter if you're a lefty or a righty, the very top bevel is bevel number one. As a right-hander, this is bevel number two because we're counting clockwise. This is bevel number three. A bevel is a flat side. Bevel four and bevel five is the very bottom. As a lefty, we count the other direction. Bevel one is on top, just like righties. Bevel two, 45 degree angle slanted bevel. Three is on the side, four is the bottom left, and five is the very bottom. For righties and lefties, bevel one and bevel five are the same. Now, what is typically taught for slice backhands, and it works for many, many players, is to put these two spots on bevel number two. Again, bevel number two is this bevel, bevel one, bevel two. That's called the continental grip. And that works for the vast majority of players. But there is a percentage of players who struggle hitting slice backhands with that grip. So what I would highly recommend is actually taking, instead of putting the base knuckle and the heel pad on bevel number two here, I would actually recommend that you put it on the corner between two and one. Instead of being flat on number two, be on the corner between two and one, and it will make a world of difference, and I'll explain why in a second. Now, there are four checkpoints on the slice backhand. Four checkpoints, checkpoints are, think of checkpoints as like mile markers. Think of checkpoints as places you can stop a video and you should see certain things. So when it comes to the slice backhand, the four checkpoints are the ready position, the unit turn, the contact, and the finish. So ready position, unit turn, contact, and the finish. Let me show you this from the front. Ready position, unit turn, contact, finish. Let's go over each position. Checkpoint number one, the ready position. You wanna make sure that you have a good ready position. I've heard coaches online and in person talk about how ready position should be relaxed and athletic, you should be loose. I kinda disagree in a sense. Ready positions aren't places to, or positions to be waiting in or they're not positions you should be starting in. You should be ready. And a ready, ready position has the elbows out away from you with good distance between you and the racket and the racket vertical like this. You can also see that the racket is about 45 degrees tilted away from me. I watch most players in a club setting and they're like this. Look, if you're as talented as Rod Laver and you wanna play tennis like this the way he did with his arms just like dangling on the side, then by all means, I'm not here to change your mind. But if you're struggling with your slice backhand, even starting with a great beginning is really gonna help you have a great ending when it comes to the slice. So you've got your great ready position, elbows out, feet wide, knees bent, you're split stepping as your opponent strikes the ball. And that's really the easiest <laughs> checkpoint of them all, really on all strokes, is the ready position. So have a great ready position. The second checkpoint is the unit turn. Now, when we take our racket back, I'm facing this direction, the opponent hits the ball to my backhand. When I see the ball come to my backhand and I know I wanna hit a slice backhand, I'm gonna take my racket back. Depending on the grip I'm gonna use, I'm either gonna use a continental grip, if I'm pretty advanced and I feel confident in it, but if you're struggling with the slice, I would actually recommend turning it a tad farther. Again, at contact, I'll explain why but getting the grip change right away and setting the racket correctly is really important. Now, I wanna describe this position. A couple things. First, I want you to notice how I've turned my body sideways to my target or even a little past sideways. You really want to turn away from your target 
That way you can actually stay sideways through the contact and I'll explain that as we go along. But you cannot hit uh, slice an effective slice back in while facing forward. So you've got to turn sideways. Again, for my orientation here, I'm hitting the ball that direction. So as soon as the ball comes to you, you should get your body sideways or pass sideways. Second, where are we gonna set the racket? First, I want to have my arm extended when I set my racket behind me. I know that you watch most of the pros and they have their arm bent on a slice backhand. When your arm is bent on a slice backhand, a couple things can occur. First, if you hit with a bent arm, it can really give you a case of tennis elbow. So even if your arm is bent on the turn, it's gonna have to straighten by the time you contact the ball. And that's just one more movement to have to worry about, especially if you're struggling with the slice backhand, that I just wouldn't recommend you having to worry about. So since at contact we want the arm extended, let's at first just learn the slice backhand with the arm extended. That way the only origin of movement comes from the shoulder and we're not like we're dealing cards or like Michael Jackson in the beat it video we don't need to worry about the elbow extending we that was a pretty good impression right so we got to just move from the shoulder and it's much easier to just worry about the shoulder rather than having to worry about the shoulder movement and the elbow movement the next thing is notice my racket height is around head level and if I'm hitting the ball this direction and I turn you can see that my racket is open now, many players, when they turn for a slice back here, and the racket is wide open like this, and it just leads to having an incorrect contact. So you don't have to have the racket straight up and down, but do have it more vertical than it is horizontal. And you can do that by having the back elbow up. You can see as my elbow drops, my racket opens. As I lift my elbow, my racket gets more vertical. We don't want it straight up and down. We do want it a little bit open, but we just want to make sure that it's not laid open too much, way too difficult to get the contact point to be right. So I'm hitting the ball this way, I'm in my ready position, the ball comes to me, I see it's a backhand uh, and I'm gonna use a slice. I'm gonna turn my body sideways or even a little past sideways to my intended target. I'm gonna, I'm gonna change my grip, I'm gonna extend my hitting arm, my back elbow is up and my racket head is gonna be about head level and it's gonna be a little bit open. This is checkpoint number two. So the easy thing you can do is just film yourself from the side and look to see if you get in to this position right here. Next, checkpoint number three is the contact. Now, most players who I give lessons to who say they struggle with their slice backhand, when, they, when I ask them, you know, let's say George, right? I say, George, how wide open do you think the racket should be on a slice backhand at contact? What should the angle be at contact? I would say 90% of the time, students who struggle with their slice backhand will say either 45 degrees or even more open. But the truth of the matter is most slice backhands that are hit are hit with a racket that is less than 10 degrees open. And the higher the contact, the even more square against the back of the ball. Remember I suggested that you use a different grip if you're struggling with your slice backhand. This is actually the reason why. Most players who struggle with their slice backhand and the racket is wide open, and if you've seen someone struggle with their slice backhand, they cut way up too much underneath the ball, the ball has way too much backspin, it floats and it just dies in the middle of the court and the opponent can come in and really hit it aggressively. The fix for that is getting the racket to be more square against the back of the ball. Well, the way tennis players can use the grip systems in order to change the racket face is actually to turn the grip on a slice backhand a little past a continental, not all the way to an eastern backhand, but in between a continental and an eastern backhand, which was that corner I showed you at the beginning of the video between bevel one and bevel two. If you put the knuckle and the heel pad on that corner between those two bevels, watch what it does to the racket face it squares up the racket face a lot more. And now I'm penetrating through the back of the ball rather than having the racket face wide open. Just think about a golf club. The more lofted it is, the more the ball's gonna go up. So we can change the grip a little more to square up the racket against the back of the ball. So I've got my checkpoint number one. I'm gonna turn to checkpoint number two, turning the body sideways. My arm is extended, my back elbow's up, racket's around head level, and my racket's a little bit open. I'm then gonna go with two hands going down toward the ball, leading with two hands, and then before contact, I'm gonna let go, and this is what contact should look like. 
the racket's gonna be slightly above my hand for a strong wrist position. And again, notice the contact is a little bit out in front of my right foot since I'm right-handed. But notice how straight up and down my racket is. The lower the contact, the more open you'll want the racket to be. The higher the contact, the more square against the back of the ball you're gonna want the racket to be. But if we just play the ball around belly button height, the average ball height that you're gonna hit on a slice back in, then what you're gonna look for is a few degrees open racket face at contact. Now, this leads us to understanding the racket path that we wanna have throughout a slice backhand. I want you to think of a canoe, or if you draw a smiley face, two eyes and a smiley face, that is the shape of the swing that you want to have. It's gonna go high to medium to high. High, medium, high. Again, if it's a very low ball, you're gonna get your body down, but it's the same idea. It's drawing a canoe, and you can see the benefit of having my arm extended. It doesn't mean it's locked and it's, it's painful. It's just extended, and then I'm using just my shoulder to make this move. I'm in my ready position, I grip change, get to checkpoint two, and now I'm gonna begin going down with two hands to support the racket head, otherwise the racket does this. I'm gonna support the racket head so I can get the racket square, pretty much square, against the back of the ball. But then this is where, from checkpoint three, the contact, to checkpoint four, a couple things are gonna occur. I'm gonna swing back up to a relatively the same height I had in the beginning of the swing, where the racket was around head level. I'm gonna go back up to that height but simultaneously, just before contact, remember I let go with this non-hitting hand? I'm gonna let go and then move my non-hitting hand back behind me. That keeps my body sideways, which allows my racket to swing out toward my target. Watch this from the back. Let's say I'm hitting the ball across my neighbor's front yard. I'm in my ready position. Elbows are out, feet are wide, knees bent. I split step as my opponent hits. Ball comes to my backhand side. I then immediately turn sideways, or even with my upper body, a little pass sideways to my target. Arm is extended, back elbows up to not let the racket go too open, but my racket is gonna be a little bit open and the racket's around head level. I then adjust and I move to where I need to be. Then I go slightly down toward the ball with both hands on. You don't want, and coaches, look for this, don't let your student let go here. They'll make this move and the racket's gonna be dropping as their hand goes to the ball and then they'll be wide open when they hit. So you gotta support the racket head with both hands as you begin the forward swing. Then just before contact, you're gonna let go with your non-hitting hand and you can see my racket is facing my target, which is straight along the yard here. And then I'm gonna swing back out and up toward my target and notice my arms like a, um, a baseball umpire saying safe. The arms go in opposite directions. When the arms go in opposite directions, that keeps my body sideways to my target. The reason we wanna keep the body sideways to the target is it allows your racket to track out toward the target. If your body opens up, then your racket swings that way. Sure, can some pros <laughs> get away with doing this? Of course. but nothing personal. If you're watching this video, you're most likely not a pro tennis player and you need every help you can get. Yes, just because they don't use training wheels at the Tour de France doesn't mean that four-year-olds shouldn't use training wheels. You got to start somewhere and by starting by keeping your body sideways and swinging out towards your target like this will give you the best chance of having your accurate slice backhands that you're looking for. One last thing when it comes to the finish. I want you to notice that if I look under my racket, I'm looking at my target, and my racket is slightly elevated but to the left of my hand. Most players who struggle with their slice backhand finish either with their racket straight up and down or completely flipped over, and they make this move. Their racket flips, and the racket, if they're right-handed, goes off to the right of their hand. You really should finish in what's called an archway. An archway means if I just start walking, I'm gonna walk under the racket. The racket is actually above my eyesight and it's in between my body and my target. Watch this again. Here's my contact. My target is straight away from the camera and I'm swinging toward my target. And I could actually walk toward my target, walking under my racket. I want you to film yourself and I want you to start going checkpoint by checkpoint. What does your ready position look like? Does your ready position look like this? Or does your ready position look ready? It's not a starting position and it's not a waiting position. It's a ready position. So do you look ready in your ready position or do you look just relaxed? I'd rather you look ready than relaxed. It's not called a relaxed position. It's called a ready position. 
Checkpoint number two, if I'm hitting the ball this way, as soon as you see that it's a, a sliced backhand, turn, or a ball coming to your backhand, turn your body, change the grip, and if you need a little bit of help getting the racket square against the back of the ball, turn your grip a little bit farther than you feel comfortable doing, but it'll feel great at contact. It'll feel weird back here, but it'll feel great at contact because your racket will be like this rather than wide open. Change the grip a little farther maybe than you're used to, extending the arm, back elbow up, racket around head level, and you can see that my racket is a little bit open. I then move in this position, figuring out where I want to be to strike this ball. I then go downward to contact, but with both hands. Again, that supports the racket head. If I let go here, my racket drops, and then it's gonna be very tough to figure out how to get the, my racket square against the back of the ball again. I then go downward to the ball just before contact. I let go with my non-hitting hand. At contact, I went down to the contact slightly open racket. You don't want to put a ton of backspin on the ball. It's not like the more slice you hit on the ball, the better. This is like ketchup. It's not like the more ketchup you put on a, a, a hamburger or, or french fries, the better. You don't put gallons and gallons of it. It's not like, it doesn't work that way. And slice is no different. It's not like the more slice you put on this ball, the better the result. It's actually going to make the shot worse. So only put a little bit of slice in most situations and you'll hit a nice, deep, penetrating shot that's difficult for the opponents to handle. You go down to contact with a racket that descends to contact that's slightly open, but again, you can see my racket is very straight up and down. And then I'm going to separate my hands, which keeps my body sideways to my target, so that the racket tracks out toward the target. And you'll see this from the back. I go out toward my target, but my racket is to the left of my hand around head level. I'm looking, it's left of my hand because I'm right-handed. I'm looking at my target with my left hand reaching back behind me, and I could actually walk toward my target under my racket. Please go out and film yourself. If, you want, if you've never filmed yourself before, I think you're gonna be shocked at the good and the good that you see, but also the areas for improvement. I think proper video analysis is absolutely the best way to make positive changes in someone's technique. And you can do that too when you're armed with the right information. So I hope this video helped you out. Please like and share. And if this is YouTube, please subscribe. Um, I really want to make a huge impact in your tennis game and in your friends' tennis games. I know that with the right information, you can make huge strides and you can see your level of play go way up. This is Ryan Reedy over at Two Minute Tennis. Thanks so much.